Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now I know I am quite slow on the uptake with this particular video. Most VR content creators have already covered this on their channels, but I still wanted to come in and check this out and showcase it on my channel because I love emulation and this is a particularly cool piece of emulation. Now today we're looking at the Citra VR application for the Quest family of headsets. Now what this is, is effectively a new version of Citra and Citra is an existing 3DS emulator, but this new version runs natively on Quest headsets, so Quest 2, Quest 3, Quest Pro, and it allows you to play 3DS games natively on your Quest headset, so it doesn't need to be plugged into a PC to do this, you only need to plug it into a PC to transfer the games across and set the application up the first time. So this is all running in here without me being hooked up to the PC, and not only does it allow you to play 3DS games on your quest it also allows them to play in 3d so right now i have new super mario brothers 2 open in front of me hopefully you can see that i'm in pass through right now it is quite dark the sun is setting out here it's still winter um so hopefully the recording doesn't look too crazy and grainy but apologies if it does um so right now in front of me i have new super mario brothers 2 and I can play this on this massive screen, which I can move around and position in front of me, uh, and it is in 3D. So it's like looking into a window or a fish tank, or just like a little kind of maquette, a little kind of diorama. It, it looks beautiful. Now I love emulation. Um, I emulate on my Steam Deck, I emulate on my PC, I've got a couple of kind of little handheld emulation devices, but one console I've never really bothered to emulate is the 3DS. Mainly because I still have one, you know, I've still got my 3DS, um, and I absolutely love the 3DS. But the real reason is, the big selling point for me anyway of the 3DS, outside of its great back catalogue of games, is the 3D aspect. And Emulating 3DS games without the 3D just always felt kind of weird. It's fine, like they work perfectly flat, but the 3D aspect is so cool. It's a big selling point of the hardware. And now you can emulate them with the 3D intact. Okay, so here we go. This is New Super Mario Bros. 2. Now, there are a couple of little caveats, a couple of little things I will mention um, as we are playing the game here. Now, it isn't perfect. Not every single 3DS game is going to run and be exactly like they are on the 3DS. Now, New Super Mario Bros. 2, it is hitching every now and then. It is kind of lagging slightly. And there are things you can do inside the emulation software to make it better. Now, what I am doing already in this video is I'm running this game um, at two times native resolution. Now, the default is much higher, so when you set Citra VR up, it's, I don't know what it is in terms of times, but it is a much higher internal resolution. The games look stunning like that, um, really crisp, they look kind of like new games, I guess. Now, this is running at two times native resolution, and it does look really good. It doesn't look as crisp as it did when I first booted Citra up, and it was on the automatic setting. But it looks perfectly fine, completely and utterly playable. Still really, really crisp. So, you've got to be a little bit kind of humble about what the Quest is capable of, especially if you're running on a Quest 2. If you're struggling to run these games on their native, like, automatic resolution inside of Citra, just drop it down in the settings, and I'll show you how to do that in a mo after I've got through this level. But yeah, it looks incredible. Like it's, it is like looking into a window. So kind of Mario and all the kind of the floor he's walking on. That's like the foreground, and then everything else is 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 going in. So you're not going to get that on a YouTube video like this. You're not going to see why I think it's so cool. Um, but hopefully, me explaining it makes sense. It is like looking into a fish tank or a window. Really, really smart. Um, <laughs> just another great way to play Nintendo games on a non-Nintendo console. Oh my god, my head is a brick! What does this mean? I don't think I ever played this Mario game, but he is spewing coins out of his butthole right now. I mean, I'm just, I don't know what's happening, but it's great. I'm just gonna keep bouncing around there. Oh, that was cool. They're clapping for me now, I'm not sure why. Um, you'll also notice I am playing with my touch controllers. So automatically, here we go. Oh, I should have done that, because that's how I get over there. Automatically, the buttons are already mapped to my touch controllers. Now, I will say, and I'll show this, I'll demonstrate it with a different game, it isn't 
not always the best mapping. You can use an Xbox controller or kind of a third-party Bluetooth controller to play these games if you prefer, and you can map the buttons yourself. But if you do use the touch controllers, it's perfectly fine for most games, but for some games, the default mapping is a little bit rough. Now, I did mention as well you can move the screens, so I can move it up, I can move it right above my head, I could be like, put it on the ceiling, and I don't know why I'd do that, my neck immediately hurts. Um, but I can play Mario in 3D on my ceiling now. Oh, if I don't, you know, if I don't want to have a, a, a nice neck for later on in my life, this is how I could do it. Oh my god, I can, I can immediately feel that strain. That's not nice, let's bring it back down. Um, so you can position it wherever you like, and you can shrink the screen as well. So right now, it's, it's quite big, but I can have a much smaller one. I'm gonna have a tiny one, look at that. I don't know if that helps performance at all. I think I prefer the bigger screen, but you can make it really tiny like that, or much, much bigger. That's the biggest that it will go currently. I don't think it does help performance making it um, smaller. It just makes it so you can't see it properly. Really, really smart. Right, let's jump over to a different game, and I'll show you what I mean about the button mapping. Um, honestly, perfect for most games, but for a few that I've encountered so far, it can be a little bit problematic. Okay, so this is what Citra VR looks like when you load into it on your Quest, and I've got some ROMs already loaded into the application as well. But effectively, this is what you'll see when you load up Citra for the first time, um, minus the games I already have in here. Now, you can go into the settings panel here, and you can change things like graphics, like I alluded to. So right now, I have the internal resolution set to two times. Now, I don't know what default actually goes to. Um, it goes to auto. I guess it changes on a case-by-case, game-by-game basis. That definitely looks better. It, everything's kind of smoothed out. All the edges are much smoother. It's clearly a higher resolution, but I was encountering some performance issues. So leaving it on two times for most games means that the performance is a little bit more consistent but you can play around with this stuff again on a case-by-case -case basis now another thing that can increase performance is this audio stretching option this is on by default but if you turn it off you can increase the performance of your games it might have an impact on the audio quality though if you've done any emulation in the past i'm sure you'll know what audio stretching does um, a lot of emulation software when you jump in and play a rom of an old game you'll hear the audio kind of lagging, hitching, stopping, freezing. This kind of combats that, but it does reduce performance. If you don't mind the audio being a little bit wonky, a little bit crazy, you can turn that off to gain back a little bit of performance. Right, let's load up another game and I'll show you what I mean by the button mapping not being perfect, not being ideal if you're using your touch controllers. I'm going to use Lego Lord of the Rings as an example. Here we go, Lego Lord of the Rings. Now again, this is in 3D, so the title card, the Lego The Lord of the Rings, that's in 3D, so it sits in the forefront, and everything else kind of sits back, again, like looking into a window. Right, Battle of the Last Alliance. Let's load into this. That looks cool. The spinning one ring looks really cool, because that is very 3D. Okay, here we go. We're into some gameplay. Now, the LEGO games are a great example of why the button mapping on touch controllers isn't perfect in Citra VR, because currently I'm running around using my left touch controller, and if I want to attack, it's also the left touch controller. So you can't move and attack at the same time. I think it's why that is attack. So right now I'm attacking, and now I'm moving. So I have to stop moving to fight the orcs, I noticed this with Donkey Kong. I was playing Donkey Kong Country, and his attacks are mapped again to X and Y, so on the left controller, but that's also the controller that will move Donkey Kong around. Now, in that instance, I would probably recommend setting up a Bluetooth controller, like an Xbox controller or something, um, mapping the buttons to that and using that instead of the touch controllers. This is nice. This is convenient. You know, you can load straight into your Quest 2, Quest 3, whatever it is you have and play games with the touch controllers and that is amazing but it isn't perfect so it is completely playable out of the box without tinkering with anything but if you want the best results you are going to have to tinker with something i just got shot in the head and died that really sucked i don't remember that happening in the movies um so yeah currently lord of the rings donkey kong games like that moving and attacking is bound to the same touch controller. I did try to change the mappings of the touch controllers, but I didn't seem to be able to. Um, again, that's where using a 
Xbox controller or a Bluetooth controller is probably going to be the best course of action for you. You will have a better um, experience. I've just blooming died again. I'm getting murdered constantly, right? I need to play a different game. Now, not every single 3DS ROM that you can get your grubby little hands on will work. Um, some games perform better than others. There is a working list detailing which games run better on Citra uh, than others. It's a little bit like the Unreal Engine VR list, if you've seen that. Some will say they're working poorly, some will say okay, some will say perfectly. But don't expect every single game that you can get your hands on to run like a dream. I already know that Resident Evil The Mercenaries barely runs. The whole quest starts to slow down and lag. It isn't pretty. But things like Mario Kart 7 are surprising surprisingly good. Hell yeah, Mario Kart 7. Now this is probably one of the best showcases for Citra VR currently. Um, at least I think so. It, it just works really, really well. Why would I play as anyone but Yoshi? Come on now, Yoshi is the only correct choice in Mario Kart. I don't care about the wheels. and Oh, don't put me in a bloody monster truck. That'll do. Um, yeah, this runs really, really well. Um, there are still instances of slowdown and hitching. Um, it isn't completely perfect, but it is definitely one of the best. Look, it looks gorgeous as well. From a visual standpoint, this and Ocarina of Time, probably the two best visually appealing games to play in 3D in your Quest headset. First race, I'm on 150 cc's. Why did I put it on 150 cc's? That seems dumb. I didn't even get a boost start. Okay, so everything is mapped correctly here. So you've got your drift. You can fire off your, your shells and stuff. And it just runs really, really well. Um, okay, I have to win this race. I, I, I won't accept anything other than first place for this video, please. Now, apologies if like the centering of the action and the screen here isn't dead center in what you're seeing on this video. Um, I remember from past experience that recording pass-through on the quest, I need to kind of angle my head down so, <laughs> so that you guys can see everything, but I'm kind of looking not at the middle of the action. I think it's just how everything's kind of centered on the quest when you're recording pass through. Oh, come off it! Okay, it's alright, it's alright, it's alright. Right. We, we can get out of this. I, I really want to come first. I, I don't want to come anything less than first. Come on, come on. We've just got Bowser to contend with. It's always Bowser in first place. Like, he's such a chunky lunk. But, oh, come on. That was a great green shell shot. Um... He's so chunky, but he always ends up, like, in first if you're playing on 150 cc's. I don't know why, but if I play as him, he's so slow. Computer plays as him. Speed Demon. He's got NOS for days. No. Oh, I should have used my shell. I'm not shell, banana. Throw it in front of him. Get him. That was terrible. I'm not going to come first. I'm going to come bloody second. Come on, come on, come on. Do him on this corner. Do him on this corner. He's done it! He's done it! Bloody Yoshi. Now, honestly, this looks absolutely incredible. I, I would sit and play all of Mario Kart 7 like this. This and Ocarina and Majora's Mask, I would play them in their entirety on my quest. It's a really comfortable way to experience them on this big 3D screen. Um, I've played them on my actual 3DS, and, and they're fantastic games, but having this bigger screen is amazing. And if you can tinker to get the performance perfect... Ah, oh, you'll be laughing. And, and the app will continue to get updates, you know, it will continue to improve with time. Right now, this is the first pass. It's only been out for a couple of days, two days, something like that. And the solo developer, the, the person that's poured it over, Amanda, uh, she, she's worked on this, as far as I know, on her own. So she's taken Citra, the existing emulation software, and ported it onto the Quest natively on her own. Uh, as, a, as a cool little hobby project and I totally respect that but it's just her working on it so if it isn't perfect right now give it time eventually now that it's public as well it will get better and better. I will honestly never understand why Nintendo haven't put this version of Ocarina of Time on any other platform. This version is so nice like look how clean Link looks his model is amazing like everything looks so good like this this is surely like the definitive version of Ocarina of Time and they they just left it here on the 3DS. Put put it on the Switch, you know, put it put it somewhere. <laughs> Come on now. Now honestly, along with um Mario Kart 7, this looks phenomenal. Um 
absolutely phenomenal. It looks so crisp, and this game's got such great depth. You know, it, it, it really does look like just playing it on a massive 3D TV. The way it's all going, I can see right up to the little tunnel over there, and it's all got layers of depth to it. It doesn't look like foreground, background. It's continual depth. Like looking into a tunnel, it's um, absolutely stunning. Now the one thing I haven't mentioned at all is the touch screen down here on the bottom. Now you can't move this, whereas I can move that top screen wherever I want and I can resize it. The touch screen you can't move, it is static, but you can touch it with your touch controller. So if I point at view, let's say, and click, I can go into first person, back, uh, gear, there's my gear, there's my little... <laughs> my little clothes, my little my little jacket, uh, map, items, and you can cycle through everything on the touchscreen by using your touch controllers to point and click it. That's a really, really nice feature um, that is just really impressive, I think, because so many um, systems, when you're emulating 3DS, it's the touchscreen that's, that's the awkward part, it's the wonky part, um, but it works really, really well here. Okay, let's go and get the sword. I don't know if I'll have time to get the shield as well. Um, I have to get loads of money to get the shield, don't I? It's like 50 rupees, I want to say. Sword's easy. We got the sword straight away. Look at that. Easy peasy. I've played this game a thousand times. It looks absolutely fantastic. This is the, like the nicest I've ever seen ocarina, like classic ocarina looking. Um, nice big, it's like because it's this version, which is a really lovely version of the game anyway, on a bigger screen than I've ever seen it on. Um, and I could make it look better by increasing that internal resolution, pushing it up, leaving it on auto, or putting it up to, I think it goes to 10, but you will see a performance hit if you do so. So bear that in mind, you have the tools here to make these experiences look phenomenal, but there may be a performance hit. Right, where is my sword? Give me my bloody sword. There we go. Lovely. Got a sword now. I can go and cut some grass. Okay, I think I need 50 rupees to buy the shield. How many have I got now? 50? It can't be 50. I've only got 15. Hello, I'm here to steal that. Thank you very much. I'm leaving now. That's all I wanted. Just wanted the blue rupee. And now I'm going. All right, you got any rupees in your rocks? Anything in it? No, nothing. Anything in this one? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Fantastic. All right, let's see how much it actually costs. I'm feeling like it's 50, but I feel like I might be going insane. I don't want to look that way. Is it 50? Hello, sir. I'd like to buy a shield. 40. That's expensive. I don't quite have enough, but I will be back. Now, something that's quite interesting with this emulator, which also exists on Dolphin, I think a lot of Nintendo emulators, um, is that the first time you do something, the game might kind of lag or slow down somewhat so the first time I fight one of them I fought one a minute ago so that wasn't the first time um, but the first time you do something you do an action for the first time or an effect happens for the first time things slow down a little bit I guess it's because it's creating the kind of the shaders there and then like it hasn't cached the shaders I don't know exactly how it works but it seems to me in most Nintendo emulators the first time you do something new the first time the game shows off a new effect or something it slows down somewhat it's it's interesting. Um, I guess it's to do with the way Nintendo do shaders, deal with shaders, um, and then emulating it is quite difficult because it's not running on the native hardware. Right, I'm going to leave it here. This is absolutely awesome. This is Citra VR, a free 3DS emulator that you can run natively on your Quest device. Whether that's Quest 2, Quest 3, Quest Pro, whatever you've got, this will work. As I say, not all games will run perfectly, and you might need to tinker with things like the internal resolution to get the best results. But if you're willing to do that, um, and you're willing to accept that this is a brand new app, and it will get updates with time, and it will continue to improve, I think you'll have a really good time with this. It's such a cool way to revisit and replay some of these iconic Nintendo games. I mean, these 3DS games have never looked this good because I've never played them on a screen this size, and I'm retaining the 3D aspect that made them so special. It's it's really impressive, um, and yeah, huge thanks to Amanda for, for creating this, getting this out, and giving it to the community. I will put a link to the download in the description, so hop over, download it. I can't tell you where to get the ROMs. That is entirely on you. You need to figure that out yourself, but that's what Google's for. I'm sure you can figure it out. I'm sure you're smart enough. Um, but yeah, the application itself is free. 
and yeah, very, very impressive, especially for a first pass. It's only been out for a couple of days, and yeah, it's ah, blowing my mind already. These games look gorgeous, particularly Ocarina and Mario Kart 7. Hopefully you've enjoyed, guys. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you soon for another one. I have a slingshot now. That's fun. I'm going to shoot those stupid spiders right in their stupid spider faces. Right. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Oh, no. How do I get out of here? I wanted to kill these spiders before I quit the video. Take that, you stupid, disgusted. And you. Don't look at me. And you. I know you're up there as well. Yeah, take that, stupid spiders. Right, take care, everyone. See you soon for another one. Say goodbye, Link. There he is, look. Looking absolutely amazing. Ah, oh, incredible. Citra VR. Download it today.